In this video I'm going to show you how you can easily cover a filing box and turn it from a dull and boring box into a pretty and practical box like this. Welcome to the Sewn Craft channel. My name is Shireen Haynes. Being creative and teaching are my passions and I've been doing this full time since 1993. I post regular, easy to follow, step-by-step -step videos for sewing and craft and if you would like to know when I post new videos, click on the subscribe button and the little bell icon below and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up because it helps me to spread the word that sewing and crafting are fun. So let's take a look at how to cover a filing box quickly and easily, step-by-step. -step. This is the box that I have chosen to cover today but all of the tips and techniques that I'm going to show you will apply to any size or shape box so you would just adjust the dimensions accordingly as I'm going to show you in a few minutes. But just one tip before I start covering my box, I like to reinforce all of the corners of the lid. So I just take a strip of masking tape and then what I do is I just take that and I pull it securely around both sides of each of the four corners. I will provide a list of all of the items that I've used to cover this box at the end of this video. Now I need to measure how large this box is so I've wrapped my tape measure around all four sides and I'm going to record this measurement. Now just a quick tip I'm using my 3 meter or 120 inch long tape measure because a regular dressmaker's tape measure would not wrap comfortably around this large box. Now the next measurement I'm going to take is the side of the box. So I measure from the top edge to the bottom edge and then I record that measurement as well. Just another little tip, I keep a pencil handy and then I record the measurements on the side of the box. Now we need to measure the lid, so we're going to start right at the very edge of the lid and then take the tape measure all the way across the top and then to the very edge of the lid on the opposite side and then we'll record that measurement. And now I'm going to measure the width of the lid, so I start at the very edge of the lid, take the tape across the top and then back down the other side of the lid. So I'll record that measurement as well. So I've just recorded those measurements on the top of the lid. If you're going to make more than one box it might be a good idea to record those measurements on a piece of paper instead. Now we're ready to cut the fabric for the box. So the piece of fabric will equal the actual measurement taken plus one centimeter or half an inch along each side plus five centimeters or two inches along the top and bottom edges. Now we're ready to cut the fabric for the lid which will equal the actual measurement taken plus five centimeters or two inches along each of the four sides. Now once the fabric has been cut for the sides of the box what you're going to do is overlock or overcast all of the raw edges all the way around. Then the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to fold in the five centimeters along the top edge. So the extra five that we had cut on we fold in and then I just take my little handy gauge and then I check that it is five centimeters and then you just keep going all the way along and folding your fabric using the handy gauge as your guide to make sure that you've got a perfectly neat five centimeters folded in all the way along. So I've already done that all the way along the entire strip and then you're going to do the same along the bottom edge. 
so you would also take your little handy gauge and then just measure in the five centimeters fold and then just keep checking that you have got five centimeters evenly all the way along so I've now completed that so now I'm ready just to stitch these two sides together with that one centimeter or that half inch seam now just before I stitch that one centimeter or half inch seam I'm going to do one extra little step and that is add the vinyl pocket to the front of the fabric now I would like to put this little vinyl pocket onto the front of my box so that I can slip a card into there so that I can identify what is inside the box. So I have prepared my little pocket already and to prepare that you cut yourself a strip of the clear vinyl and that would be 8 centimeters wide by 7 centimeters high and then I just placed binding along all four edges. Now if you want to know more about binding you can watch my video about binding. Now my pocket is all prepared but I need to mark the spot on the fabric where it's going to be attached. So in order to do that this would be the part of the fabric that's going to go across the front of the box. So I measure one centimeter or half an inch in from the edge because that is my seam allowance and then I measure the distance of the box and I mark that in on the fabric. So here you'll see I've got my one centimeter marked in and then the distance of the box marked in across the top. Now I need to just find the midpoint between those two points which is over there and then I take my ruler and I pop the straight edge of the ruler in line with that straight Preston edge so that I know that I'm going to draw a nice straight line down the center of the fabric. So there I have my line. Now I need to mark the position of where I'm going to place the pocket. So I measure six centimeters down from that top edge and I make a little mark. So now I know exactly where to position this little pocket. I find the midpoint of the pocket and I pop that on. Now I'm just going to pin this on and actually stitch along the three edges. So all I did was I stitched down the side across the bottom and up the other side using a denim or a jeans needle in my sewing machine. Now that my pocket is attached to the cover, I'm going to join the two side seams. So I just bring the side seam from the opposite side, pin these together, and then I'm going to stitch this with a one centimeter or a half inch seam allowance. Then all that I'm going to do now is press this seam allowance flat and open. So I just finger flatten the seam allowance flat and open and then gently press that. Now I'm going to apply some double sided tape to the fabric but I'm going to position it one centimeter or half an inch away from the edge. So I've just measured my one centimeter and then I make sure that I just pop the tape on at that position. Now I'm going to just smooth that on all the way around the whole side cover until I get back to this point here and then I would do the same along that top edge there. And I've finished putting the double sided tape along the second side and then I'll just cut the end off but leave the paper backing 
on the tape for now. We'll only remove the paper backing once we are ready to put our fabric onto our box. Now I'm ready to slip the fabric over the box. So I just simply turn it right sides out. And then I'm going to slip this over my box. Now that I have slipped my fabric on over my box, I just make sure that the seam that I had stitched is in line with the side edge of the box. Then I will know that this little window that I've put onto the front of the box will be in the center of the front of the box. Now the next thing that we're going to look at is these five centimeter or two inch hems that we had pressed in, they will allow the fabric to fold neatly along that pressed in fold along all four edges of the box. Likewise at the bottom of the box that pressed in hem line will fold neatly to the underneath side of the box along all four of the edges. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove this paper backing that is on the double sided tape so that I can then stick the fabric down onto the box along all four sides at the top and at the bottom. Now here is just another little tip for getting the, t the paper off of the double sided tape. Sometimes it's very difficult to start at the beginning to peel that paper off. So what I do is I take a pin and I actually just slit the paper to tear it. And then it's much easier to pull the paper backing off that way. So I'll just peel that off and I'll come back and I'll just peel this little bit off here. So now I'll just pop a little pin in under this paper here and pull that off and any little bits that stay behind you just pop a pin in under those and pop them off as well. Now just another little tip, I will pull the paper off until I get to the corner and when I'm at the corner I'll just snap the paper off and then I'm going to pull this fabric around and stick it down. Before I fold the fabric over to stick it down on the inside I like to lie the box on its side like this because it's much easier to fold the fabric over because you can see your pressed in line as well and then you can simply just smooth that down. Now before I get to the corner here I'm going to just stick a pin in at that corner and then I'm going to lift that tape up or the paper backing that's on the tape and then I'm going to remove it and I'm going to remove it right up until the top corner of the left hand side. So we just grab a hold of the paper and we are going to just pull that off. So I'm going to just pull it off until I get to the top corner and then I'm going to just quickly snap the paper backing off and then I'm going to turn the box onto its side and then fold the fabric neatly over to the inside. Now don't worry about the corners here yet, we'll sort those out in a minute. So just make sure that you've got your fabric folded over and stuck down. Because what I do is once I've stuck everything down then I come and I just arrange my corners nice and neatly. So then I'll go around to the other side and so I'm going to continue around all four sides. So I just pull the paper off till I get to the corner and then fold the fabric over, stick it down and as I say don't worry about these corners yet, we'll come back and fix them at the end and then the last side. So now that I've stuck all four of my sides down, I hadn't worried about the corners because I come back and do them last. Now there will be a tiny little bit of excess fabric in the corner, so what I do is I take the fabric and I 
pinch it together and almost make a little pleat in the fabric so that it's a straight pleat or a straight fold in the corner. And then I simply stick that down nice and neatly. And that way you get four neat corners on the inside of your box. Now I want to start sticking the fabric down on the underside of the box. So once again I started off just by sticking the pin into the corner of that paper backing so that it's a little bit torn because then it makes it easier to actually pull the paper backing off. So we pull that paper backing off but we stop when we get to the corner and then just break the, the paper off at the very corner. So we just break that off. Now once that's broken off we're going to stick this down all along the underside of the box. Now I'm going to remove the paper backing from the first side and then what I'm going to do once the paper backing is removed I simply fold that corner in like that to make a nice neat corner and then I will do the same at the bottom corner. So all of these will be folded in and neatly mitered. Now that I've got all four of my corners neatly mitered, I take a little bit of clear adhesive and then I spread that just on the edges and then I'm going to press that down nice and firmly and I'll do that on all four of those corners to get that fabric to stick nicely. Now you can also, instead of using your clear adhesive, you could also use the product called Jewel Bond. It's the product that you apply sequins and beads to garments with. It dries completely clear and it's waterproof and it is really, really strong. Now I like to finish off the underside of my box with a piece of fabric. So what I did was I measured the box at the bottom and I've cut a piece of fabric. Now you can use fabric or felt. And then what I did was I put a bit of the jewel bond all along the edges of my fabric. You could also use your regular gel glue. But I've used this just to show you that it's white while it's wet and then once it's dry it is super strong and it goes clear. So now all that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my piece of fabric and I'm going to pop that on top and smooth it down. So I've put my piece of fabric on over my box and you'll see in parts there little bits of the white glue coming through but that's absolutely fine because it dries completely clear once it is dry. So just to make sure that the edges of the fabric don't lift, I also just lift it up gently and then just put an extra little layer of glue right along the very very edge of the fabric and then just pat that down and as I say if you see any white glue don't worry it does dry completely completely clear and it is super strong. Now we're ready to cover the lid so I take the piece of fabric that I had cut to the same size as the lid plus that five centimeters or two inches all the way around or four sides. I then pressed those seams in along all four of the sides so that's all ready. Now I'm ready to pop this on over my lid. The next step is to drape the fabric with the wrong side facing up over the lid. So the little pressed in edges will line up with the edge of the lid along all four of your sides. So just make sure that you've got the pressed in edges up against the edge of the lid. Now we're going to go to each corner and we're going to just fold it and then we're going to pop a pin in in line with the edge of the box. So you can feel where the edge of the box is. So we are going to just pop that pin in there and you're going to do this along all four of your corners. Now I've pinned all four of my corners 
and the next thing that I'm going to do is just before I lift the fabric off of the lid is I take my tailor's pen or my marking pen and I mark in on the fabric where the top edge of the box is because it's very important that we stitch from the top edge and often we can't get the pin in close enough to the top edge so I mark exactly where the top edge of the box is on all four of my corners and then once that's done I'm going to remove my fabric from my lid and then I'll continue pinning each corner all the way down and stitch so here I've slipped the fabric off of the box and I've got my pins in on all four of my corners but we just fold the fabric so that the edges are together and even and there's my little pin in there and that is where I made the mark where the top of the box was so what I'm now going to do is take my little handy gauge and then I'm going to mark from that point I'm going to draw a straight line down to the bottom of the fabric. So even though the pin is a little bit away from it, it doesn't matter. We're actually going to stitch on this line. So now I'm going to do this on all four of my corners and then I will stitch. So I'm just going to move my pins in and they're going to go on that line so that I can stitch on that line. Now that I have marked and pinned all four of those corners, I'm ready to stitch along that marked in line. Now just another little tip, never start stitching right on the edge of the fabric. Start a couple of millimeters in from the edge. The reason being is that if you start on the edge, it bunches up and makes a little bubble. So I always start a couple of millimeters in, I stitch forward a bit and then I reverse to the edge and come forward again. So let's do that quickly. So I'm just going to remove my pin. Now I've got the needle in a couple of millimeters from the edge of the fabric. So I do a couple of stitches forward and then I'm going to reverse to the edge and then come forward again. Then when I get to the edge, I'm going to reverse, cut my threads, lift my foot and there it is done. So I don't have a bubble at the beginning. So it's neatly finished off and it's securely finished off at the beginning and at the end. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this excess fabric off, but I'll cut it off with about a one centimeter or a half an inch seam allowance. Do not cut too close to your stitches and I will do that on all four of my corners. So now I have stitched all four of my corners so I'm going to just cut the excess fabric away and I cut about one centimeter or half an inch away from my stitching line and I'm going to do that on all four of the corners. Now I want to push each one of those points out nice and crisply so I just use my point turner and I pop that in and I push that little point out nice and crisply. So now you'll be able to see that there's no bubble that formed at the top of this point and that is because I started stitching a little bit in from the edge. So I'll just push out all four points now just before we drape our fabric over our lid to put it on in its permanent position, we'll put a piece of double sided tape along all four of the edges of the cover and that will be about one centimeter or half an inch away from the actual edge of the fabric. Here I've pulled the fabric on over my lid so all I need to do now is to flip it over remove the paper backing from the double sided tape and stick each side down just like I did for the inside of the box. I'll also finish off the corners last of all and make little folds just to make it nice and neat in each corner. 
So here is my finished product with its lid all neatly covered as well. So all that's left to do is to pop a label into that little window in the front of the box. And I now have a box to store all of my craft tools in. To get rid of this chalk mark that I'd made with my dressmaker's pencil, I simply take a little stiff bristled nail brush and then I just give that a quick brush. And all of those chalk marks will disappear. Now as a final finishing touch, I like to apply a waterproof medium onto my box. The instructions for applying it to fabric is on the side of the bottle. Now this keeps my box waterproof and it makes it easy to clean. For example, if it does get dusty, I can just take a damp cloth and wipe it. So it'll stay looking good for a very, very long time. Now you'll be able to find this product at any arts and crafts store and it's designed to go over fabric painted items like for example tablecloths or placemats that might tend to get stained. So what those people like to do is they paint waterproof medium on top of the items to stop them from being stained. Here is a visual list of all of the items I used to cover my box. I started with a filing box that had a lid. Then I got my sewing machine ready with a jeans needle in it. Then I used my wristband pin cushion and my fabric covered utility box and there is also a video on how to make this. I also used the 3 meter or 120 inch tape measure and my sewers or quilters ruler, a pair of scissors, a stiff bristled nail brush, a point turner, a marking pen and a chalk pencil, and my handy gauge for measuring. Now I like to store all my small items in the fabric covered utility box to stop them from getting lost on my workspace. Then we also used double sided tape, some gel adhesive or jewel bond glue, and then finally some waterproof medium. Now you can cover boxes that can store various items in them. And if you need to know how much fabric you need, especially if you would like to cover more than one box, an economical amount of fabric for four boxes is either three meters of fabric that is 150 centimeters wide or 3.3 yards of 60 inch wide fabric. Now if you would like to have access to more of my videos like this with hints, tips, techniques and projects that are all about sewing, craft, decor or digitizing, please feel free to subscribe to my channel and remember to click on the little bell so that you won't miss any new videos that I post.